What up, pressure washers? So, today I'm going to talk to you about are you ready for spring? Are you ready for to start your pressure washing business? Have you gotten everything ready that you need ready to go? So, I have actually this week I did a, um, a trailer build for a guy that is um, he is getting ready. His name is Al, and he is getting ready to retire. Um, he is retiring as a school teacher, and when he retires as a school teacher, he's going to become a full-time pressure washer. So guess what he did? He's getting ready to um, his business. So um, I changed all the oils. I built the whole trailer, the whole nine yards. And with that being said, I will be... Um, putting all the videos out there. I've been editing them today and I've, I've edited a bunch of videos. I'll probably have 10 videos, 10, 20 videos just on this one trailer bill. So with that being said, we need to get ready for um, spring is just around the corner. And actually today I had somebody message me. Um, I see DJ is on here and so I'm gonna bring him into my story. Um, it is cold today, and but here's the deal. It's only supposed to be cold for a couple days here, and I know it is cold out there, but you got to remember, it's going to get back up in the 40s and 50s around this area, which is really crazy around here. So I understand that it can get up, you know, it's going to get cold other places up farther north, but he asked, you know, what do we do in wintertime? Well, I'm going to tell you what we did in wintertime. Now, this depends on if you have a place to store your your trailer or your truck inside, but we washed in the wintertime. You know, we had four trucks running um, during the whole time, but this time of year, we would have one truck running. And I understand it's cold in Wisconsin, and you're probably not going to be doing no pressure washing at all in the wintertime. But... There, that is something that, you know, if we get up in the 40 degree day, we were out pressure washing, you know. DJ told me the other day he'd already made about a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred dollars, and it's only January. And he wasn't planning on making money till um, coming in till um, spring. So if you have any questions, start asking any. If, some, if I get a tone, I will have to run. But uh, again, I will take some questions here if anybody has any questions. Um, that way I can start answering them. And uh, I'm not planning on talking on this a lot. I'm more planning on talking um, just because with the um, firehouse, when I'm here, I'm kind of at the mercy of if somebody needs me to go for them to help them. But again, we need to, you know, this is some ways that we can make money that, you know, we can make money sometimes in February and in January, you know, it, it's a matter of, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, if we get a week of 50 degree weather, then that way we can make sure that we, um, get everything done you know we can get that or maybe we know that on friday it's going to be 50 that we can book two or three jobs on friday and then that way we can build up some revenue in the winter month that we never even thought we could get and that, that is a great thing that we can do that so then that way we can um, make sure that um, we can um, stay busy and all that kind of stuff. So I got some questions coming. You see Don Moore um, washed a house today. And that is, you know, that's awesome, dude. You can make money in the wintertime. How long from long out? I was there back in October. Um, all right. So I'm going to scroll through here. I, I've seen I'm getting some questions um, from Myrtle Beach. That sounds like it's warm. I'll be down in there shortly. Well, I'll be in Florida. Um, in, in March. All right. I'd rather clean windows until March, not long enough period of time before you need to winterize your equipment. And that is some things that, you know, if you have a, a garage you can keep in that's warm, then that's one thing. If you have to winterize it every time, then it may not be worth trying to do that. Um, either that or you kind of winterize it like I did and you go straight um, antifreeze. And then when you start doing it a few times, it, it'll it'll still go down, but it won't kill it all the way. Um, go Packers. The Chiefs did win, so um, we need to get together ASCP. Want to go over some Google stuff with you. Like I said, lunch on me. All right, come on down. Um, what do you charge for each job, and how long does it take to do a job? So 
pricing. Pricing is very important. Pricing will either make you or break you. Pricing will, you know, and pricing across the country can be up, down, all over. You know, there's $99 guys in Florida, but there's $99 guys in Cincinnati. Uh, so, you know, there is stuff that it can be all over the board. You know, and you got to remember that not everybody's your customer. You know, if you're shooting for the $99, the $99 guy. So, with that being said, uh, you know, the $400 jobs, we don't want the $99. We want to shoot for the $400 jobs. Now, are we going to close as many? Probably not. But do we need to close as many? The $99 guy is going to take four jobs just to do your one job. That's going to take the same amount of time. So on time, you know, I could do house washes within an hour, hour, hour and 15 minutes, in, out, and done. You know, on some bigger houses, it might take me an hour and 20, hour and 30 minutes. But it's very fast and it goes in quick. So when I first started out, I tried to shoot for $200 an hour. Now we're up to about $300 now that I shoot for. So, um, um, so $300 an hour per truck is what I shoot for. Um, and it's not that hard to shoot. You know, we have um, four trucks up there, which I just quit up there. But they had four trucks up there, and their goal was $1,500 a day. So, you know, that adds up a lot and makes a lot of money. So that is some things that you got to look at. All right, I got to... Um, let's see. For residential work, is hot water pressure washer required? No, it is not required. Um, in fact, if you do, re if, in fact, the only reason why you really need hot water for is if we're doing a lot of commercial work or if we're getting a lot of concrete cleaning and, and trying to pop gum and we're trying to um, pop gum and we're trying to get oil stains up. Um, it helps bring oil stains up, but even hot water will not bring an oil stain up all the way. So no, we do not need it in residential. Now, in the winter time, you can use hot water to, you know, still here, cause I'm gonna be, um, you can use cold water um, and that is fine. So that is something that you can do is use cold water. So um, you can use cold water for everything you need for house washing. In fact, we have several rigs and all they have is cold water and we have no issues making lots of money. Um, so that is the, the thing there. Um, let me see. I already looked at that. Uh, where do you get merch made at what company? Or do you make it in-house? We just got... So on our shirts, um, we always used um, Queensboro, or Queensboro was one. Um, we used a couple local companies, depending on what it is. Um, Queensboro was pretty cheap. Um, and they do, and they're not the best of quality. You can get Nike shirts and that for, you know, not that expensive, or you can make them. If you're going to make them, just make sure that you go get a hundred percent polyester sh um, shirts. If you don't get a hundred percent polyester, um, you will bleach it out and not be good. Yeah, that is awesome. The uh, rent collector, my largest ticket in Indian Hill was, 11,600 this past season. And how long did it take you to do that job? Probably a day or two, probably two days, maybe two or three days, I would guess. So that is awesome. Um, let's see. Um, got a job, got a job tomorrow. Supposed to be in the 40s never washed when it was that cool how long of dwell time i'm using 12.5 i probably wouldn't cut it at all and i would just let it dwell you'll see how long you need to let it dwell probably five ten minutes but i probably wouldn't even cut it i would just do straight fit straight mix being that it's only in the 40s and uh and let it sit there um, you might be able to do two sides and come back the good thing is when it's 40 it usually isn't going to dry very fast anyway so you by the time you get your sodium hypochlorite is um, if you're using old bleach then you may have to let it sit a little bit longer um all right i want the class price and dates for lolo's car care um, the one class we're going to be doing is um, in um, 
in Atlanta will be February 21st and 22nd, I believe it is. Um, and that is um, $800 if you go, if you go to pressurewatchhealth.com slash washathon. Um, if you want to come to Cincinnati, that class will be in March and that class will be $750. Um, let's see. I don't even market to small houses anymore. My average ticket runs between $1,500 and $3,000. And then we're the type of people we want. We don't want the little houses. Um, you know, we want them bigger houses. That's where we can make a lot of money and we can go in and be there for three or four hours and leave and make a thousand bucks. I'm doing pressure washing, gutter cleaning, detail to try to stay busy. Gotcha. Indian Hill, like, they keep me busy. Hey, that's the thing. You get into a nice neighborhood and you get your name out there and you really push it. You can stay in that neighborhood. Can I have a buffer tank and still hook up to client's home? Yes. In fact, you will want to do that. Um, buffer tank is basically to keep it from overheating. Um, unless you're going to haul a lot of water, that's the best way to do that. Um, that way you can do, um, but yeah. Um, in fact, I will be having a bunch of videos coming out. Um, like I said, I have, I did a trailer build for a guy uh, for Dayton, um, north of me for Dayton. And uh, he, I did about, I know I got probably 20 videos and each video goes over everything. All these videos will be in the membership um, and then they will be sprinkled out on the YouTube channel over time. I don't know how long it'll take for them all to get out, but that is that is my plan. Um, do you itemize your packages or just give a total for the package? Example, house A, $400. House B, 400 plus concrete. Um, no, we do not. We just do um, house or package A is $300, which includes house wash, da 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 da. Package B is um, $550, so it'll be window cleaning and then plus package A. And then package C is, is everything A, B, and whatever C is. So that is how we are able to do that. Um, and, and guys, I wanna, I'm going to push my membership a little bit here. So one of the guys in, in here, um, he, just, he just Facebooked me and told me that my email sequences work. It's amazing how email sequences work. Now, he's using House Call Pro. Um, and I have a link if you want to use it, um, or you can use Responsibid, and I have a link down here too for Responsibid, but, and I have a link for my membership where all my email sequences are. And this email sequence will send out so many days after somebody has opened it up. And he just sent it to me and said, Jason, your number 14 email sequence worked amazing. This guy, I've tried to call him, he wouldn't answer me when 14 came, they came book the like five or six hundred dollar job like that so that is the importance of the email sequences so you've got to have email sequences for these follow-up for these customers if you're not doing follow-up you're wasting your time getting leads because you're letting leads go bye-bye so this is very important to get those leads out there and get them followed up on um, like i say um, I, it's not something I'm making this up. He just sent it to me the other day in Facebook. And so that's why um, I seen one of the questions it made me think of, you got to follow up on your stuff. If you don't follow, and here's the thing, even if that customer tells you no, don't, you didn't sell yourself good enough, still send them follow up emails because guess what? It still might get them to buy something. You still might make a thousand dollars off of them. Um, Let's see. Was looking at some landscape. Looking at was looking at having some landscape equipment with me, blower edger, and charging for a small extra service. Yeah, you can add it as an upsell, um, and that's awesome. A eleven hundred or eleven thousand dollars for one job, 
and it took him four hours. Can you imagine making $11,000 in four hours? Four hours. $11,000. I know it can be done because I've done it. So I know that it can be done. 100%. You know. Um, iron oxide removal on an off. New pack. Oh, I got you. Um, ready to go to Washathon. Again, go to pressurewashhelp.com slash Washathon if you haven't signed up yet. Um, it'll give you all the details. It will be going up in February. Um, so make sure you get signed up before February. Pricing your gas station pump covering area, not the ground, same or more than by the square foot for a house wash. It's going to be a little bit more because. Um, I don't know if it's going to be more. It's just a little bit different. Um, a lot of times you're going to have to use a degreaser because that diesel smoke gets up in there and that kind of stuff. So it ain't just uh, spray it, bleach, and let it go. Um, Liberty Power Wash, I believe last stream, Jason told me to ask you about the... Oh, yeah, I did. How long would you stay a batch of SH and water would be good for? Uh, it depends. It depends on if it's in a lot of heat, if it's in direct sunlight, um, that will kill the life of it. But you can usually get three or four weeks out of it um, if it's in a nice cool area, something like that. I've gotten three, four weeks out. I've gotten longer than that. But um, it sure feels like the industry is getting flooded with new guys and most are seriously lowballing the work. Don't worry about the low ballers, dude. Don't worry about it. People worry about this stuff so much that, you know, oh my God, all the low ballers. You know what happens to the low ballers? It, it's happened since I've started seven or 10 years ago now. They come and they go. And you know what you do? You buy their equipment because they, they don't, they bought this equipment and they didn't know how to charge and they didn't know how to run a business. And when they don't know how to run a business, they go out of business. So when they go out of business, you buy their equipment really cheap. And that's what happens. And guess what? Then you know, and, and it's like I said, there's customers out there that they're you know, there's customers in the in Indian Hill will buy a ninety nine dollar house wash. But ninety nine percent of them will not buy a ninety nine dollar house wash. You know why? They don't have insurance, they don't have workers comp, they don't have business, nothing. So that's why all they're wanting is to get their drug money and go on. Um, let me see here. What's up, Building Wash, North Carolina? Just upgraded to a five and a half gallon, 3,000 PSI machine. I, do, I don't need a buffer tank. Gonna mount in my van. What do you think is a good size SH tank and how I was gonna set up a 200 foot hose? Um, you don't need a buffer tank, but I would highly suggest a buffer tank or I would suggest making it where you can take that line and throw it out on the ground and let it run out when it's not doing it. Because what will happen is, is it will overheat. If you let that gun off and don't do it, it will overheat and then you will need a new pump. And that sucks if you do that. Um, I would, depending on if you're gonna do roof cleaning or not, um, if you're not gonna do roof cleaning, I would probably, you would probably could get away with a 30 gallon tank, even maybe even a 20 gallon tank. I have a great customer base from my shrink wrapping, but also want your course to add service to my webpage. Yeah. Hey, Brian, that is, I, I haven't responded back to you yet. I will be responding. Um, I've been a little busy, crazy this week. So I did see your email. I have seen your emails come through, ask questions. I will get you. Jack of all trade is a master of none. Well, yeah, that is true. Niching down does help sometimes. I know folks do it but be careful hauling that sh concentrated in the same airspace as you that is 100 percent true um that is very it can be very bad in fact i used to have a van um uh, and i quit i actually took it all out back out of the van because when you would throw pennies in the thing and like two weeks later they were completely oxidized green what's that doing to your lungs probably not the best Best part, they paid in white envelope full of cash, no check, $11,000. How much can you make doing sidewalks or driveways with surface cleaner? 
as much as you want to charge. I mean, I, you know, we would, we was 20, 25 cents a square foot. Um, you know, we would try to, even that we would try to shoot for $200 a, um, an hour. Um, driveways, I was $200 cause a hundred, I used to do them at a hundred and I wasn't making no money at them because it, some driveways can take you more than an hour pretty long. Yeah. 10 to 20. Yeah, that's a good place to be. Um, best testing process for SH potency. Um, <laughs> now the right answer to that question is, is there's an actual kit I believe you can buy, but that kit is like, it's pretty expensive. The method I use that is not probably the safest method. It works, but it's not, I'm, I probably shouldn't say it a whole lot out loud, but it, it does work. You stick your little finger in it and you just want the little bit on, on the tip of your finger. And if it starts turning white fast, that is some hot sodium hypochlorite. That is some good stuff. But make sure you're getting this stuff off of your finger. It's actually killing the cells on your finger. So if it's, if it's hot, it'll turn white real fast. If it's not hot, it won't turn white at all. It won't, it, I mean, it's not working at all. So that's how I've always tested it is just stick your little finger in there and say, yep, that's hot. Now, if you have a cut on that little finger, don't stay it in there because it's going to burn like a son of a gun. So you got to be careful on that. <laughs> um, I was told by multiple times by clients they don't want the cheap guy. No matter how good he is, they don't want the local drunk druggies. or, a, And that's... Um, Jason feels that <laughs> There's the hazmat truck right there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's um, that is the right way to do it. Um, yeah, so again, that is true, a hundred percent. People don't always want the cheap guy. Some people, you know, it goes back. I'm gonna give you. I've I've told this story, and I'm still telling the story because I'm still waiting on this garage door. I'm waiting on a garage door in my house on the bottom of my. It goes into a um, a cistern, and in that cistern is a. Um, is I want a garage door on it. So the cheap guy was like $900. Well, the most expensive guy was like $1,600. And I'm like, dude, what, a, you know, why are you so much more and whatnot? And so guess what? I still don't have a garage door because the $800 guy hasn't showed up. Now, when I pay the $1,600 guy, he'll be and have it done in, in the two weeks because it takes a week to get the specialized door. So that is the important part of, you know, if, 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 the most expensive guy, you know, the $99 guy is probably going to be so busy, he don't know which way is up, and he's not going to be able to answer his phone, first off, because um, he's not going to be able to afford an answering service if he can't afford to hire somebody or make sure that he answers that phone. So that is the difference between a $99 guy and the sixteen or the $1,000 guy and the $1,600 guy. So that is why it is important, um, so that way people will be able to answer the phone. Um, starting business with a four gallon a minute machine known I need to downstream injector but what cleaning solution should I start off with so you're going to start a business with a four gallon a minute and that is fine you can absolutely do that 100% and you want to downstream so the downstream injector I think you need is a 2.1 I believe it is it's either a 2.1 or 2.3 I think it's a 2.1 um, and then you are going to downstream sodium hypochloride, SH, um, also known as bleach. Um, pool shock is the better name for it. So pool shock comes in two things. It comes in 10% and 10, 12.5%. Um, if you can get to 12.5%, that's actually better. Um, when you do it with the 12.5%, you're also going to add a surfactant in there. And, you know, and you're going to downstream that. Um, usually, I still cut my sodium hypochloride down to 50%, so then I'm less than a percent going out of my gun. And this way, I do not kill, I won't kill anything at that point. Um, there is some people that go straight SH, 
um, but you definitely need to pre-wet everything because straight the difference between straight sh and 50 50 which is six percent sh downstream down is the difference of killing plants versus not killing plants so at that point you need to pre-wet everything and make sure everything is pre-wetted and that way everything um, will stay good for you um Jenny, thanks for your honesty, info and honesty. Hey, I'm all about giving true information. You know, a lot of your Facebook groups, there's a bunch of them out there that will give new guys BS information. And I'm not, I do not want to do that. And I do not, you know, I don't care how silly the question is. I will give you the right answer no matter what. What is better, what is better pay help, hourly or percentage? Depends on your business model, to be honest. Um, percentage works good. Um, hourly works good, too. It just depends, you know. Um, we did it both ways. I like percentage because then I know, then I know kind of my cost better. When you're doing it hourly and they're doing it overtime, you don't always know your cost. So this way you can know your cost a little bit better. But you just got to make sure you do it at a fair rate. You know, the guys always made more money on when we did it as percentage so that is you know the guys liked it under percentage but um some of the guys liked it under percentage some of them that don't like to work very fast liked it the other way because they would back around and then they'd get on overtime and they would make more money because they they did that how do you measure square foot of a commercial building i'm power washing an apartment building i'm new to power washing and he's looking for a quote um so commercial buildings you can do, you you know, some of these people will be like, I'm going to do it at this much because this is how much I do it at the house. You probably won't get the job then. So um, we measure it, you know, you can measure it off Google Earth. You can do it that way. But we try to measure it and see how long it's going to take. And then we times that by $300 an hour. So if it's going to take 10 hours, that's a $3,000 a day. And that's how we do that. Um percent of the ticket yes percent of the ticket is how we do pay um, we pay you know if the job was a $500 job we give them 15 percent does anyone ever ask for a guarantee not to kill plants or do you just explain the care you take not to cause any problems or issue um, I mean we just and if we kill them you fess up and you fix them I mean you gotta that's part of being in business I did a house in the Hamptons and I had a mahogany deck, which was gray from the sun, it has the beachy look. And I wet the thing during house wash, but the deck had a few spots where it was discolored. Well, the mahogany is a hardwood. Um, mahogany deck was gray from the sun and the beach look. I went to house wash, but the deck had a few spots where it was discolored. I'm assuming that the bleach went through the water. It didn't get pre-wetted enough. Why is my roof pump shutting off after 10 minutes? I just the screw didn't help. Is it because I shut it off at the gun? Is it because I shut it off? If you shut it off at the gun, it should shut off. Um, it should build up pressure and then cut off. Um, if it's shutting off before then, you may have little, not a big enough wire, um, something like that. Will the deck go back to being gray? It removed the color from the client's like. Um, it, sh ooh, it should go gray. It will eventually. It will eventually. Um, otherwise, you might. that's not a good thing. Um, it should go back gray. It will eventually. If you're starting a business, should you go solo or should we go with a partner? Solo. Solo. Jason, thanks for all your help. You are correct. I trust your word and not others. Well, thank you, David. I mean, I did grow my business to a million dollars and I sold it and I grew it back to another million dollars. And every person that, so this business that bought my business had 10 other businesses and all those 10 businesses and some of them are some big names out there. All went this way. And guess which way is Jason's went? This way. So, and like I say, there's some big name people that, um, 
that is well known and their business went and they talk about systems and the system must not work as well um what up oh dale how you doing steve um how to remove gum with four gallon unit cold four gallon a minute cold um red tip <laughs> Carbon nozzle, it still may not come up. Um, with a cold unit, the, honestly, the best thing you could probably do is is go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy one of those propane tanks um, that's got like a nice long handle. And I know this sounds rigged and hillbilly is all get outs. And you go up there and you take that blowtorch and you heat that gum up and then you come back with your um, pressure washer and you rinse it off. Um, that's probably the only way you're going to get it up other than just taking a red tip and just digging the gravel out basically is the only way other way you do it but if you take a torch or a blow torch heat that gum up let it start emulsifying and then your water will knock it off of there um how much sh do you use on average size house gallons cost um you're probably using max if even if you go way too much five gallons of straight so you 10 gallons a mix you're using i use anywhere from about eight to ten gallons a mix so you're looking at eight to ten gallons a mix if you can get bleach for say two dollars a gallon you're at five gallons so you're ten dollars just for the bleach not much at all um is there a customer agreement disclaimer standard that is available for exterior cleaners. There is in my membership that is, it's kind of under, I think I put it under there. It's, uh, it's under the emails that I send out and it's, um, and it kind of on that email is there's an email that goes out right for the schedule and it's all the things they need to make sure that they have done and stuff. And you can find that at the pressure wash slash training. How did you set your expectations on your water fed pole window cleaning? I started offering this this year and the windows come out good, but they sometimes don't come out perfect. I'm not going to buff or detail. And you got to also tell them, you know, if the inside is dirty, that ain't my fault. You know, if you don't clean the inside of your window and the outside's clean and the inside's not, that's not my problem. That means you need to get an interior window cleaning. And now, I was going to say nine times out of ten, that is true. If you check your TPS and your TPS is under 15, then it is definitely, it, TP, yeah, TPS, it's definitely going to be under, you know, then it's going to be on the inside. Unless you just missed the spot or did something stupid, then that could cause it to be on the outside. But most of the time, it's going to be on the inside, and that way you can do that. Um, rent collector, what can did you use to remove um, oxide iron? He probably used F9 or a um, F9, or he used a uh, F9, um, or he used aluminum brightener but I would guess you probably use F9 if I was on that big of a job do you use any kind of CRM this is my second year using house call pro like all the notification that it gives to the customer um, I I do like house call pro you can the you can put in the email sequences that are in my training um, into it um, or you can do it yourself um, I would highly recommend it um, you can do a lot with house call pro I know there I mean there's not one that's the go I we used um, service monster I really didn't like it um, I really like um, it's not a CRM though that's the only issue but we used it like a CRM I really like responsive because it's not about the quoting system it's more about the email sequence and guess what emails what make you money because guess what? If you got this pretty CRM and you never utilize email and them people, then what's the purpose of that CRM? I mean, you know, what's the purpose of it? Great videos. I'm learning a lot. How do you feel about combining two lower GPMs to get upper volume? 
that's how I started out. If you see some of my older videos or seen, if you've seen the one that has a big white van and a big trailer, I had a uh, four gallon a minute that I watered and I got, I, uh, so I'll tell you how my story, a little quick story of me. So when I started, I had a, um, I bought a trailer, that big black trailer that I did. It was rough. I had to redo it all. So I bought that trailer and then I went and on that trailer, there was um, two lawnmowers on there. So with the two lawnmowers, I paid $400 for it. So for them two lawnmowers, I was able to make one lawnmower. And then I traded one lawnmower, riding lawnmower, for a four gallon a minute pressure washer. With that four gallon a minute pressure washer, I bought another five and a half gallon pressure washer, heated. The coil was bad in it. I paid a thousand dollars for that coil, or I paid a thousand dollars for the um, for that heater. I had to put a new coil on it, so the coil was four hundred dollars. So now I'm up to eighteen hundred dollars. Um, time I bought a couple reels, I was under about twenty two hundred dollars, and that's how I did it. And all I did is is I would tie the two together. Um, and then I would run both of them and that gave me nine gallons a minute and it worked perfect um, The buffer tank I used was um, an old water tank my dad had had And they used to have to haul water and so that's how I was able to get that water tank and make everything work right and, and get everything going um, Okay, wash the driveway acorn left standing best way to remove it um, bleach sh um, you may have to use a stronger uh, mix and house wash mix uh, but that's just an organic stain so organic stains um, if it's organic stains we can use sodium hypochloride to clean it if it's other if it's an if it's not a, you know then if it's not an or, organic stain if it's a rust stain or something like that then we need to use something else. But um, that is something that we can use that for. Um, but yeah, you know, you might have to use a 6% mix that's actually on, the, on you know, out of your roof pump mix to hit that, to get that up and make it clean and come out good. Um, what is aluminum brightener used, being used for? So aluminum brightener can be used uh, to remove rust um, it can also be used to <laughs> make a driveway look white. Um, you know how uh, over time that driveway may not look new again and that. If you put that, it, it's basically, um, it's the same, it's um, high, it's very dangerous. It's stuff that can eat you to the bone. Um, I don't recommend it too much, um, but it can be very dangerous. It can, like I say, it's stuff that they put um, stuff in and, get rid of bodies so be careful with that stuff hydrochloric acid is what it is fluoric um, what do you use for rust stains um, I always use the F9 I know it's forty dollars a gallon or you can use rust removal plus also works good too it just depends on what I'm using it for um, I like the both um, rust removal plus you can probably do a little spot where F9 you kind of got to do a whole area um chlorinating liquid plus dawn dish soap is that okay to start off with chlor i don't know what you mean by chlorinating i'm assuming pool shock is what you want um that's what you want what's your ratio for surfactant and sh in your tanks i believe you said you mix 50 50 and one ounce of surfactant per gallon and now sometimes I'll go down to a half an ounce. It depends on if I'm doing a roof that day. If I'm doing a roof that day, I'll do it at one ounce. If I'm not doing a roof that day, I'll do it at a half an ounce um, a gallon. And that's what I'll do as a half an ounce a gallon. Um, yeah, Don Soap ain't the best to use. You can use it, but uh, make sure you get the stuff that can actually mix with it um, because you can make a bad gas out of it. If you, if I have oxidized siding, what should I use and how should I apply it? Um, there's a couple ways you can do. You can um, cleanse all BC from EcoChem. You can downstream it and it will bring it off. Um, that's probably the easiest way that I've found. Um, the other ways you can do it is use like F13, which is gutter brightening. 
and then you got to hand scrub it. Um, the Cleanse All BC, I've been told, is it will actually bring it off and not have to scrub it or nothing like that. Best cost to mask SH. I have noticed customers complaining about their strong smell. That's why I use Snot Menade, um, and you can get it either cherry scent or you can get it lemon scent. I actually like the lemon scent, or I'm sorry, I actually like the cherry scent better than I do the lemon. Or you can buy a scent stuff to put in it. Um, a lot of places sell that scent stuff. I know Russ sells it. Um, I think Pressure Tech sells it. I'm sure everywhere else sells it too because they were going to make money off of you on that. So that is something that you can do um, to do that. But um, yeah, that is the best way to do it. But just remember, um, Russell, that um, even though you get rid of the smell, don't don't forget that that stuff is still dangerous. Um, you got to be careful breathing the roof. It can definitely hurt you and not be good for you. What method did you use to pay employees? I talked about that earlier, but we use both methods. I paid hourly and I paid, um, and I paid, um, I did hourly and I did commission. Um, the guys, I like commission. You got to remember if you do commission, you have to pay them over the minimum wage. If you don't pay them over the minimum wage, and even if they're working overtime, it's still going to be over that minimum wage. If it's not over that minimum wage, you can get in a lot of trouble. Um, so you got to make sure you know the law on that kind of stuff on it. But if we work percentage, like I had two guys that love making percentage because they would actually make more than if they would. Like one of the guys, um, he would be back every day. It didn't matter if you gave him three or four house wash. He'd be back every day at 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. He was just good. He'd get out there, get it done, and, and don't mess around. Um, then you got guys that work till six or seven o'clock at night because they can't get stuff done. And so then that, uh, the, oh, I mean, did you deduct taxes from them or 1099? So just remember guys, 1099 and a guy is not having a legit business, uh, because he don't have workers comp and that's what you're trying to get out and you're trying to get out of payroll taxes. So we did pay, pay payroll tax the whole nine yards. Um, it is something that we did to uh, make it happen so that way we could, uh, you know, I mean, it is part of the business, you know, we, but, and it sucks because you pay a whole lot of, men, whole lot of money out and, and, um, and payroll tax and all that crap. Um, thanks, Jason, for the information on lemon brightener. I will use the proper PE. Yes, you definitely want to use the... And don't ever mix a chemical because it will blow up on you. I mean, did you... Uh, what do you use to do roof cleaning? What setup, gun, etc.? Is that us? All right, I got to go.